So now it's time to put all this together into a molecular orbital diagram. We have the energies of the atomic orbitals written over here from that, that big table in the, in the chart. And so we're going to start by you know, deciding where those, those go. So I'm going to put the carbon orbitals on this side. So I know that there are the three 2p orbitals. And they're going to have symmetries B1u, B2u, and B3u. I got that from the character table. And then the AGS orbital is going to be a little bit lower. On the other side of my molecular orbital diagram, I have the uh, oxygen orbitals. Now they're lower in energy than the carbon orbitals because oxygen is more electronegative. And so I'm going to put them kind of in between these. So the oxygen orbitals, they're going to be over here. And there are six group orbitals from the combination of the two p orbitals. And we can remember what all of their symmetries were. AG, B1U, B2U, B3U, B2G, and B3G. Okay, and so this energy is kind of, again, is kind of in between the carbon 2S and 2P, so this is like negative 16-ish electron volts. And then the 2S orbital is way down here at negative 32 electron volts. Um, and though that there were two uh, S group orbitals, AG and B1U. Okay, so we've got, so on this side again, we've got our carbon, sort of imagining the two group orbitals, and over here we've got our oxygens waiting for carbon in the middle. Alrighty, so let's start matching up orbitals that have the same symmetry and similar energies. So maybe the first one we can start with here is this AG on carbon matching up with the AG group orbital. So from the AG, we can make both a bonding combination that comes down, AG, and we can make an antibonding combination that goes up, and we'll call that AG star. Okay, we can do the same thing for the B1U. And so that one, we can make up an antibonding combination, B1U star. And we can also make a bonding combination. And getting the precise energy right is tricky, um, but you know because the B1U starts a little higher, we're going to say that it ends up a little bit higher than the AG. Okay, we can also... Um, do the B2U and the B3U combinations. Now those are going to be the pi orbitals. So they're not going to be stabilized by quite as much or destabilized by quite as much. And we're, our, our symmetry doesn't actually tell us this, but these are actually going to be equivalent in energy. All right, we remaining, we have our uh, B2G and B3G. Now they are going to be non-bonding orbitals, so their energies are not going to change. They're not going to interact with any orbitals that are on carbon. Okay, now what of these oxygen group orbitals that are down here? Okay, so they have the same symmetries as some of our molecular orbitals, but they don't have this, they're, they're pretty far apart in energy. These oxygen S orbitals are way down here. So we're going to imagine that really these just change their energies by sp mixing a little bit. So the AG, because the AG is kind of the closest one, um, it's going to go down a little bit. And we can imagine that the AG orbital, the AG molecular orbital, it went up a little bit. And then the B1U is probably also going to mix a little bit with the B1U molecular orbital, but less because they're further apart in energy. So it's going to be down here. So these orbitals are essentially non-bonding, um, but they do mix just a little bit because they have the same symmetry as some of the molecular orbitals. 
Okay, so let's fill in our electrons. Um, we know that we get four electrons from carbon, four valence electrons, and on the oxygen side, we have 12 valence orbitals because we get six from each carbon. So we have a total of 16 electrons for the molecule to share. And so we'll just fill in the orbitals from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Alrighty, so here is our completed molecular orbital diagram. Um, some questions you might have. So first, our level of theory that we're using here is not gonna get us the exact order because we can't necessarily know the exact energy. So we can, um, you know, we, we, we can kind of guess based on a couple of things. So orbitals that are closer in energy are going to mix more strongly. So we started with AG, the AG orbitals that are the closest in energy. And so we saw that they had a pretty big split. Um, orbitals that are on more atoms, those are also going to have a bigger energy difference we saw that sp mixing is going to cause some little sort of little wiggles in there and that's part of why these orbitals got all bunched up in the middle and then we're just going to do our best and it's usually not a big deal to me uh, from a grading standpoint if you mix up your orbitals just a little bit we notice that our uh, our lewis structure predicted that there would be four bonds and we see here that we've got um, if we look at electrons in bonding orbitals, that's these ones. We've got four electron, or sorry, eight electrons in bonding orbitals. So if we do, if we calculate the bond order, we'll see that this equals four bonds. So a total bond order of four. And that's what we expected based on our Lewis structure. So those are the same. We also see that there are two sigma bonds. So those are these two orbitals. These are the sigma orbitals, two sigma bonds. And we also have, so in these two, these are the two pi bonds. And so that's the same as the Lewis structure. The, little, the slightly different picture is that those sigma bonds, they're not equivalent, they're different from each other. And the, in, when we sort of pictured those molecular orbitals that we drew previously, we see that the bonding is delocalized over the whole molecule. So all of the atoms contribute to a sigma bond or to a pi bond, not just two that are next to each other. That's a big difference between the molecular orbital picture and the Lewis structure. We see that the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, is the uh, lone pairs the, on oxygen. So these are the highest occupied molecular orbital is uh, uh, our electrons on oxygen. The LUMO, so this is the HOMO, um, we got the LUMO are some relatively high energy pi star orbitals on the, uh, that are molecular orbitals. So this tells us a little bit about the reactivity. If we wanted to reduce carbon dioxide, we would have to add electrons to the pi star orbital in order to weaken the bonding. Um, that, those electrons are, are, we'd have to add a lot of electrons to be able to destabilize bonding very significantly. And so it's hard to reduce CO2. Oxidizing CO2 is even less likely because the HOMO is a relatively low energy, therefore we have to add a lot of energy to get those electrons out. A relatively low energy um, and it is localized on its lone pairs. It's, it's non-binding orbitals that are localized on oxygen. So we could remove electrons from oxygen, but we wouldn't actually be breaking any bonds. So CO2 is basically impossible to oxidize. Um, one more note about lone pairs. We see that we said that, that the HOMO are lo two lone pairs on the oxygen atoms. Um, we also see that there are two more lone pairs down here at the bottom. These non-bonding orbitals uh, that are located on oxygen. Again, a little bit of sp mixing, but basically they're localized on oxygen. So like the Lewis structure, we get four lone pairs, and all of them are on oxygen. 
So overall, we can see how the molecular orbital picture and the Lewis structure tell us similar things and different things. We can also see how we can use symmetry to match up orbitals that have similar symmetry, that's the similar energy and the same symmetry in order to form molecular orbitals.